Hello there, this is NopeName. So the first version of my MC64 compiler is uh, released. It's still a testing version, so there might be bugs or there will be bugs. I already fixed a few. And the current version that I'm going to use now is um, version 0.2. Um, yeah, so if you're wondering, um, I'm calling my programming language for Minecraft.mcc and the compiler is called MC64 compiler and the overall project will be called MC64 just like the virtual com whoop, the virtual computer inside Minecraft which I made um, some time ago. This is so to say the second generation but this time you don't program inside Minecraft instead you program outside of Minecraft and then generate a data pack, which then will execute the code. And that's because it turns out um, someone called Simon816 made something else called MCC, namely a Minecraft compiler collection. It's a somewhat similar project. Um, he pretty much recreated everything you can do with a programming language C in Minecraft and he wrote a compiler or a compiler collection to translate that and yeah my language is also similar to C but I will focus on so-called modules and libraries um, yeah so it's still something different but for now there are no modules and libraries it's only the very basics because well first uh, I need the basics, of course, and after that, once um, enough testing was done and so on, I will add more features like the screen from the original MC64. A screen consisting of 128 by 128 blocks and you will be able to write programs that display stuff on that screen. But for now we only have a few functions calling it each other and while loops, if statements, and integers. So, um, da -da -dum, where is it? Okay, so let's write a program in the .mcc language. Um, first of all, we need a main function. Without a main function, nothing will work because the compiler will search for main and the data pack will start here. And for every function, you need a return statement. And right now there's only integer, no other data type. I'm planning to add more in the future and my phone is ringing. Okay. And so now we just write int for integer and we name our function. Right now it's main. In here we could pass um, parameters or arguments for a function, but main, um, yeah, can't get any arguments and yeah. So in these curly brackets, we will write the actual code <clears throat> and we want to find all the prime numbers um, from two to 10,000. 10,000 isn't a prime number, but all the prime numbers in that range between two and 10,000. So therefore we need a while loop and um, we need a variable int i that's the index and we initialize it with zero and as long as i is smaller than 10,000 we already know that 10,000 is not a prime number so we don't have to test that and <clears throat> oh we should initialize it with two because two is the first possible prime number okay and now we want to check whether it is actually a prime number and therefore we will write another function which takes one argument an integer variable and it will output one if it is a prime number and zero if it's not a prime number so if that function returns one for yes it is a prime number we will print out um, prime and after that the value of i 
and that should already be it for main uh, we could yeah just return zero at the end okay so now we need is prime again integer return type is prime and this time we have a function argument let's call it x and now we have a problem if we um, run the compiler let's see okay so let's try out the compiler i stored it in <laughs> this path here um, um, first of all if you don't know what what to do just um, write dash dash help or dash h and it will oops and it will give you some information but we don't need that right now we just want to compile um, this is stored in also oh god I have to write that test test okay this is the input fi uh, file oops Blah. sorry <laughs> so this is the input file here and um, yeah just use print right now invalid condition in line 7 here that's because the compiler doesn't know the function is prime um, because in, because it hasn't seen it yet it only knows main at this point and um, so we can either um, copy and paste it up here now it should work yes it created some code or it printed out some code it didn't actually save it um, or if you want to keep main on top uh, I personally like to do that um, we can tell the compiler that such a function exists like this um, just a definition of a function but this will this should print an error yes um, because here we give it an argument but there is no argument specified here so let's do that and now it works again okay so remember if you call a function which is implemented below um, you have to define it above so we can actually call it okay now in the function is prime we need another while loop um, to check whether there is another um, another number our potential prime number can be um, divided by and if it is such a number it's not a prime number <clears throat> that's how it, how prime numbers work um, so so we will check all the numbers from um, the first one has to be two right because the a prime number can only be divided by one and itself so if it can be divided by two or something else um, yeah it's not a prime number okay so as long as y is smaller than the input value we check if um, x modulo y equals zero which means x can be divided by one and if that's the case we return zero it's not a prime number and if it ran through the whole loop without finding such a number it is a prime number so we can return one and by the way local variables can have the same name in one function as in another function but global variables have, uh, need a unique name and i think that should already compile yes it does um but now we have a problem because we are running 10,000 times this function which runs another loop so overall we run a lot of commands and minecraft will try to run all of these commands in one game take 
which would probably freeze Minecraft. And we don't want that. So let's define um, a global variable like this. And we initialize it to zero. And in this function here, in this prime, um, we will increment pause with every loop. And if pause is greater than 10,000, uh, we will call sys.wait0, which will basically wait for the next game tick and then the program will continue. And then, of course, we have to set um, pause back to zero and maybe just print out pause here so we can easily see why that actually did that. Let's see if it compiles. No, invalid statement in line nine um, here. Why? Oh, right, because um, vari oops, variable definitions have to come before everything else. Okay, now it compiles again and now we can actually um, specify an output, um, which is right in the current directory and we call it prime 10,000. Do we want to generate 10 directories containing 22 files? Yes, we want to do that and let's check. We have uh, this directory now and in Minecraft there's now this new um, data pack so let's load it using reload and list again now it's loaded and if we run function prime 10,000 start now we have a problem <laughs> and here you can see that Minecraft freezes um, and I already know what uh, happened in here we forgot to actually increment uh, hi like that did we actually do it in here no we forgot where either uh, also oops um yeah that's since i'm used to uh, four loops and in here we only have y loops so we have to compile it again and right now, since this prime 10,000 exists already, it will give me this error. So we have to remove uh, that data pack. Now it's gone and now we can compile it again. There we go. And let's see what Minecraft did there. Okay, we can actually exit. <laughs> yeah, if you uh, mess up your um, your program, Minecraft might not like that. So now, I can't speak anymore. So now let's reload again and run the function start. And here you can see it prints out all the values that hopefully are prime numbers. And in between, you can see from time to time it uh, says pause like that. Uh, because it reached that threshold of 10,000 overall loops. And it will slow down with time since it has to check more and more values, the bigger the values get. And I will now check the output of Minecraft. Okay, it's already too late. <laughs> the Minecraft output can't handle that because I printed out probably 100,000. <laughs> uh, uh, chat messages before when Minecraft um, yeah decided to freeze um, 
let's see. I have a website open that um, displays all the prime numbers and we should soon reach um, the last one, which is 9,000 something. Oh, by the way, here you could see here you can see that Minecraft did a lot of calculation stuff. And yeah, that's the last prime number I printed out, 9973. 9, 9, yes, the website says that's correct. Correct, correct. Looks like it works. And it tells me an estimated process time of a lot of milliseconds. <laughs> Um, I think it's not very accurate, but yeah, it's a good estimation, I think. And return value was zero because we specified that here. And yeah, I will um, add this program to the uh, code examples on the GitHub page. And if you want to try it out for yourself, you can download the compiler on the GitHub page, which I will link in the video description. Um, so far, there's one version for Windows and one for Linux, at least for Ubuntu. I don't know if it runs on other distros as well. Um, in theory, you can also run it on Mac OS, but I ha since I have no Mac, um, I can't compile it there. If you know how to do it, you can download the source code and compile it for yourself source code is open and yeah all right so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it see you next time bye oh and by the way uh project zelda <laughs> i'm still working on it it's still in alpha testing mode uh the boss fight i recently continued working on it and the boss fight itself is done. Only a few cutscenes are missing. We are getting there eventually. All right. Bye.